All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Those Spec Labs. In today's episode, we are going to be deploying Olama. Then we'll be deploying Open Web UI. And then after that, we're going to connect the two and run our own locally hosted version of DeepSeek. So if you like that kind of stuff, stay tuned. If you're going to be trying to deploy a locally hosted large language model, you're going to need either lots of CPU compute or lots of GPU compute, right? And you're also going to need lots of either video RAM in the case of the GPU compute or lots of just actual RAM itself in the case of CPU compute. I'm fortunate in that I work in IT and I have been gifted other people's trash and turned it into my personal treasure. What you see before you is one of my Frankenstein servers gathered from the cobbled together pieces of many other servers. It's got 64 cores. Well, it's got 32 cores, 64 threads, and 220 gigs of RAM. These cores are running at 2.6 gigahertz. So that's, you would think that would be enough to run some of the larger models. It is sadly not. And I've considered perhaps maybe it might be time for me to upgrade, but I've been pricing it out and uh, yeah, yeah. We'll see. I feel like I need to first deploy this and then see how much I use it. And then perhaps I can justify spending the type of money it would take to build a proper AI locally hosted computer or test machine. So this is part of that. And I figured if I'm going to do that, I should share my experience with you. So in this video, we're going to be learning how to install, but that's enough rambling. Let's actually get down to the nitty gritty. If you're going to want to deploy Olama, you're going to need a Linux virtual machine or a Linux container. In my case, we're going with virtual machines because this server has two CPUs, meaning, and after my own testing before I made this video, when I tried to run Olama inside of an LXC, even though I gave it something like, you know, 62 threads or 62 CPUs, it would only use about 30 of those. When I did the same test in a virtual machine, it did actually use all 62 threads. What that tells me is there's some type of like CPU pinning or NUMA issue, right, with LXCs. I didn't really have too much time to dive into that. So if you have one CPU socket, you can save yourself some time and do this in an LXC. If you have two CPU sockets, save yourself some time and do this in a virtual machine. It just makes things easier. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to spin up a Debian virtual machine in about three, two, one. If you're going to be trying to deploy a locally hosted large language model, you're going to need either lots of CPU compute or lots of GPU compute, right? And you're also going to need lots of either video RAM in the case of the GPU compute or lots of just actual RAM itself in the case of CPU compute. I'm fortunate in that I work in IT and I have been gifted other people's trash and turned it into my personal treasure. What you see before you is one of my Frankenstein servers gathered from the cobbled together pieces of many other servers. It's got 64 cores. Well, it's got 32 cores, 64 threads and 220 gigs of RAM. These cores are running at 2.6 gigahertz. So that's, you would think that would be enough to run some of the larger models. It is sadly not. And I've considered perhaps maybe it might be time for me to upgrade. But I've been pricing it out and uh, yeah, yeah. We'll see. I feel like I need to first deploy this and then see how much I use it. And then perhaps I can justify spending the type of money it would take to build a proper AI locally hosted computer or test machine. So this is part of that. And I figured if I'm going to do that, I should share my experience with you. So in this video, we're going to be learning how to install. But that's enough rambling. Let's actually get down to the nitty gritty. If you're going to want to deploy Olama, you're going to need a Linux virtual machine or a Linux container. In my case, we're going with virtual machines because this server has two CPUs, meaning 
And after my own testing before I made this video, when I tried to run Olama inside of an LXC, even though I gave it something like, you know, 62 threads or 62 CPUs, it would only use about 30 of those. When I did the same test in a virtual machine, it did actually use all 62 threads. What that tells me is there's some type of like CPU pinning or NUMA issue, right? with LXCs, I didn't really have too much time to dive into that. So if you have one CPU socket, you can save yourself some time and do this in an LXC. If you have two CPU sockets, save yourself some time and do this in a virtual machine. It just makes things easier, right? So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna spin up a Debian virtual machine in about three, two, one. So I'm just going to go ahead and walk you through deploying the VM because there are some things you're going to want to look out for to get the most performance out of this. So right click create VM. I'm going to call this 133. I'm going to call this Olama. Next, we're going to give it a local store, pass it our Debian ISO. I always like to make my guest guest agents. Here is the part that is most important. You're going to want to give this a decent chunk of storage. Give it 128 gigs, which is about half the drive space I have available to me right now. That's local. And then the most important part is you want to give this host CPUs. Make sure that it is one socket. And then you want to give it 60. Well, however many cores you have available. I have 62 threads available or 32 cores. I just effectively gave it 31. Honestly, let's make that an even number at 30. That gives me just a little bit of overhead. Now, here comes the next part. We are going to have to give it RAM. If you have enough RAM, I would give it at least 32. In my case, I'm going to give this thing 64. And 64 gigs of RAM is 65,536. And of course, we're going to just leave it as our default network bridge and confirm. And that's it. That's how you build out the VM. I'm going to leave installing it to you and we'll pick this back up once I've got the VM installed and I'm SSH'd into it. So we have our server here, right? And what we're going to try to do is log into it. Let me go ahead and pull up a command prompt. Oh, that command prompt pulled up. We can go ahead and SSH into our server. So that is SSH 192.168.2.201. And then it's going to ask us if we accept. And then we enter the password for the server. So in order to install Olama, we're going to have to go to the Olama website. And just like that, we're installed. So in order to install Olama, we're actually going to have to go to the Olama website. So let's go ahead and do that. And we can do a quick Google search for Olama. Then we just click Olama right there. Then we click download and then we click Linux and then we can just copy Olama. And then we'll go back to our terminal. And then from there, we paste that Olama command we just copied and that should get Olama automatically installed for us. And we'll just let that run. And we are back and check this out. So Olama is now installed. It's as simple as that. We just run the command Olama gets installed and you go from there. Okay. So as you can see, Olama is now installed and it's giving us a warning that no GPU or CPU was detected. That's fine because the virtual machine that this is running on should have plenty enough compute for us to run some of the smaller models. My hope is in the future we can get our own local large language models running for relatively cheap. But technically, I think this is cutting edge stuff, boys. Now, we have the model downloaded, or rather we have Olam downloaded. So how do we test and verify our model? Well, let's click models up here on the Olama website. And as you can see, we have our models. And the model we're going to start with is DeepSeek R1 1.5B. So this is their smallest, most distilled model. And it's a good testing ground. It's going to let us see how this thing's going to perform when we actually run the commands. And in order to download the model, you select the one you want right there from the drop down. 1.15 gigabytes. We then hit copy. We go back to our terminal. Hop back on the terminal. And then running our first model should be as simple as 
O-line will run. Then we just enter our model, which in our case is DeepSeek R1 1.5B. And we're going to give it a few minutes for it to download the model, and then we'll try a simple test. So on our screen to the left, we have our Olama command prompt. And then to the right, we have a resource monitor. So we can see what type of resources it takes up. And I want you to watch what happens when we send our first prompt to what's considered one of the smallest models. Notice how the CPU usage jumps, but RAM doesn't really dump that much. So if we were to do how to spell the word, how to spell the word strawberry, which is something large language models used to struggle with, but apparently they've got that sorted out now. And let's see how our usage goes up. So if you'll notice, we immediately spiked in CPU usage, right? And look at that, we are maxing out all, what is it, I think 60 threads right now. And if we were to go to our Olama session, you'll notice it's moving relatively fast, right? Let's see, uh, okay, so that wasn't too bad, right? So it's working, it's working good. And that was actually relatively quick. And that's it, that's how you install Olama and make it reachable. Tune into the next video where we'll walk through installing OpenWebUI, connecting it to Olama, and then doing some testing on this. Thank you for watching. If you enjoy this content, please hit the like button. If you have a opinion, please comment down below. And if you like to subscribe, please subscribe.